WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160. And our conversation with State Representative Jim Struzzi is brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. Good morning to you. Good morning, Todd. I've had a chance to get back here into the district after some hard work in Harrisburg, huh? Well, yeah, it's always good to get home. We were we were in uh, Harrisburg three weeks straight for session, and then as you and I discussed last week, a bit of a policy discussion on some of the higher level agenda items that we'll have going into the fall sessions. Uh, tonight, obviously, I have my, my Blairsville Town Hall, as has been announced. I'm looking forward to that, to getting out and meeting some constituents face-to-face. Had a number of meetings this week already, um, and it, it's good to to sit down with people in my office and talk to them personally about the issues that are affecting them. Yeah. You know, I, I realize that there is a lot of stress on people's lives right now. We, we really are getting it from all angles, whether it's unemployment, whether it's concerns over the pandemic, now concerns over even, you know, getting the products that you need in the supermarkets and in, in the stores. I mean, there's a lot lot of stress on our lives right now. And and from my perspective, I really want to give people that hope that we are doing everything we can in Harrisburg within state government to try and meet those needs, to get people you know, back to, to work, back to a, a healthy quality of life. Well, let's talk about a town hall meeting. Uh, this one is in Blairsville tonight yes. uh, and folks can attend. Yes, yeah, six um, o'clock at, at the, the volunteer fire company. Yeah. Uh, do they need to pre-register or sign up ahead of we time? We prefer that they do, but, but if you want to come, please come. Um, yeah. I'm going to be giving sort of an overview of things that are happening in state government, things that have happened really since we haven't had any town hall meetings in, in, in about two years, uh, what has happened over the course of the last 18 months or so. And then it's really an, a chance for me to listen to people, again, to hear their concerns, to hear their issues, and see what we can do to help. For people who are not aware of what happens at a town hall meeting, they really can bring whatever's on their mind uh, to you. Whatever's burdening them uh, about what state government can do to help, uh, you're more than willing to listen. Yeah, and that, that's the whole point of it. It's an interaction. You know, I'll, as I said, I'll give an overview, touch on some of the higher level issues that I know are concerned to people in Indiana County and within my district, and then open it up to question and answers. I want to talk about a couple of issues that have come up this week. One of those uh, was uh, Attorney General Josh Shapiro yesterday announcing his candidacy for governor of Pennsylvania and uh, taking the opportunity right off the bat to yeah. attack uh, election reform issues that are going on in Harrisburg. I know I well, I shouldn't put those words in your mouth. Um, uh, does uh, does Mr. Shapiro have a point in what he's saying about uh, the election and uh, how the legislature is looking at it? No, I think, unfortunately, he's continuing the rhetoric that scares people. Um, the election reform bills that we're working on, uh, specifically House Bill 1800 right now that I'm a co-sponsor on, has bipartisan support. It addresses a lot of the concerns people had with the, the recent election, uh, with election integrity, um, requiring um, some identification when you vote, um, making it fair to everyone, but making sure that it's it's more difficult to cheat. And I think that's, that's really what everyone wants. You want to have integrity. You want to have faith, regardless of which side that you're on, that your vote counted and it counted accurately and appropriately and once. Yeah. Um, I just I was surprised that he came out that strongly against it right off the bat. Um, and, and that signaled that uh, that evidently is going to be a big election campaign issue for oh, well, you'll be up for reelection next year. Yes. Um, others will be up for reelection. Uh, and is that going to be a battleground? I, I'm sure that it will. I think, you know, he's he's a he's a politician. You know, he's looking at what's going to pull, uh, what's what's going to get him higher ratings. And, and that's a big issue on people's minds right now. But again, I think it's unfortunate that it gets spun in the manner that it has. Um, our goal, um, from my perspective and from our state government perspective, is simply to make sure that the elections are fair, that people have faith in the elections, that, that none of these questions, none of these things that, that hovered in people's minds after the election are, are there after the, the upcoming election. We want to make sure that everybody knows when they go to the poll or they send in their ballot that it's going to be counted fairly and accurately. The current governor has signaled that uh, he's he's sort of coming around to the idea of voter ID being an, an, an OK idea. Yes. Um, what are the big sticking points that are standing in the way of election reform? Well, again, I think it's the rhetoric. Um, people um, are you know, they're, they're, they're playing off of what's being said in the media. They're playing off being what's being said in other states. And if you look at the example of the governor, he never even read that bill when he before he vetoed it. And then when he actually sat back and looked at it and heard what it contained, he was like, oh, well, wait a minute. Maybe we should be looking at this. I think if people would actually sit down and have a fair discussion on both sides of the aisle about what the issues are, about what our voters and our constituents are concerned about, and actually work to address it instead of buying into and playing into the the rhetoric that surrounds the election issues, we could actually get something done. 
Talking with State Representative Jim Struzzi uh, today, another issue that has come up this week was actually yesterday, and again, it'll be uh, on the agenda today. The state system uh, Board of Governors mm -hmm. holding their two-day quarterly meetings uh, yesterday. Dr. Jamie Martin talking about enrollment yes. uh, and, uh, and state funding and tying mm -hmm. those two issues together. Um, uh, she gave some uh, rather stark uh, numbers um, yes. that, that we're all well aware of uh, about state funding and um, how the state appropriations have just not kept up uh, with, the, with the increases in, in, in inflation and in, in other costs. Um, I'm sure you know she has a point. The problem is how does the state address it? Sure. And, and as you know, Todd, I, I'm a, a strong advocate for the, the state system of higher education. I have been the voice asking for additional funding for, for our, our state universities. Uh, unfortunately, you know, we, we, we are seeing this significant downturn in enrollment and, you know, the physical uh, challenges that face the state system are being addressed, but they weren't being addressed previously. So I think we need to get that point of balance where, you know, we, we are providing what we need to provide for the students that we have but also controlling those those costs. And I think once people see that we're doing that, I think that's why the system redesign was so important. Because as I've said, I think I've even said to you, you know, a, a lot of my colleagues from around the state don't see the value in the state system of higher education. Um, they don't have a university. They don't they don't see the impacts locally on, on our economy. And, you know, perhaps they have no affiliation whatsoever. So they don't see the value in putting more money into that system. And that's the challenge that myself and some of my colleagues that are supporting the state system have in front of us. And that is to convince our colleagues that we should be investing more into the state system of higher education. Um, but again, it has to it has to be a wise investment. You can't just throw money at a problem and think it's going to be fixed. Um, the whole purpose of putting money into higher ed is to Obviously, there's administrative uh, costs that need to be covered and, and curriculum and things like that, but it's to help the students, in-state students, afford to go to college. That's the whole point of the state system in the beginning, was to provide a quality, low-cost educational opportunity for Pennsylvania residents. And I think we have diluted that uh, so that you know we're providing funding now to Pitt, Penn State, Temple, Lincoln, so they can lower their in-state tuition rates. And in many cases, it's very close or similar to what people are paying to go to the state system. So you've created a, an unfair uh, playing field for higher education where the state system is competing with the state related and everybody is asking for money. So we have had some really frank conversations about higher education. Uh, I'm on the Appropriations Committee, and, and I did sit in on the hearing um, last week, I believe it was, on higher education, looking at these types of issues and what we need to do to fix it, because uh, these issues aren't going to go away. Our demographic challenge challenges are here. You know, People are leaving this state. We aren't seeing as many young people coming through the educational system. What's the future of higher education look like? And all of us need to sit down, both those in higher education, in education, and those of us in, in the legislature, and talk about appropriate funding levels for education across the board, not just higher education, but K through 12. I think a lot of people look at the state system of higher education, and uh, they're so busy uh, trying to figure out who to blame and who to point fingers at that you, you don't really address the fact that here's a big hole, and IUP and the other state-owned schools find themselves in it. What's the best way out of it? Um, how do we get that lifeline down to them to bring them to, back to the surface and, and then start right. climbing? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm only in the, the first year of my second term. You know, a lot of these problems have been building up for, for decades, really. And my approach, as you know, Todd, is let's let's look at how we can work together to solve these problems. Let's not point fingers and look back. Let's look ahead because we need the state system of higher education. We need IUP to be strong here in Indiana County. What can we do to work together to fix that? And everybody needs to sit down at the table. Uh, you know, the union and the faculty and the administration and the legislature, we all need to work together to identify a clear solution. I think that they are working towards that. I think the system redesign, again, was very important to try and maximize what capital we do have in higher education, um, looking at those universities that were struggling. Uh, unfortunately, it's one system, and as I've said, one checkbook. And when you have schools that are failing, they're pulling the whole system down, and that's what I think the system redesign is trying to address. So the chancellor will make his uh, budget request today or ask the mm -hmm. board to approve his budget request, and we'll see where that all leads next. And meanwhile, you're going to be back in Harrisburg soon. And yes. 
uh, pursuing an agenda that includes what? What are some of the things that you want to see happen in the next month? Well, so? you, you just mentioned broadband, and that continues to be a, a, a serious issue for many people. As many people are now working from home, uh, still some uh, students are, are being educated from home. And again, the broadband issues are, are loud and clear. The pandemic uh, shined a very bright spotlight on the gaps that we have in that system. I'm co-sponsoring uh, several bills in Harrisburg that will provide um, hundreds of millions of dollars uh, to provide broadband access to give you know counties some funds to continue what our county commissioners have done with some of their federal money that they received but it's a problem that won't go away and it's a problem that we need to fix and we need to fix it very soon because again as we look at our demographic challenges people are moving out of Pennsylvania uh, and mainly it's because of uh, jobs and taxes tax reform needs to be something else that's on our agenda a lot of people continue to talk about property taxes and i know that's a big issue here in indiana county and it continues to be a big issue but what is the solution it's not easy to solve the property tax dilemma because you have to fund education again it, it all kind of ties together yeah. you know and as education costs continue to rise you're going to see your taxes continue to rise we need to to, to solve that problem we need to control education costs, provide more effective and efficient education. Um, tax reform, though, is big, not just property taxes, but business taxes. Um, we have some of the highest business taxes here in, in the country. And that, again, drives businesses out of Pennsylvania. Um, we need to look at mental health issues. As I said at the beginning of our segment, you know, I'm really concerned with the stresses on people's lives right now. We're seeing you know, drug addiction rates increasing, overdoses increasing. Uh, all of these things come together and, and create problems that we, we, we cannot push further. We have to address them now. We have to solve them now. And, and we have the capability to do that. You know, we put a lot of money aside uh, for next year's budget. So I'm hoping that that money, as we do see our revenues increasing now, because people are out spending and they are out doing things, I'm hoping that we can take some of that money, the $5 billion or so that we put aside for the 2022 budget, and, and utilize that to help fix some of these problems that exist now. Yeah, it seems like there have been a lot of problems pushing down the road for a lot of years, and now we're at a dead end. There's no place, there's no road left to push them down. <laughs> right, right. And I, I think people are looking us to be leaders, and we need to step up and do that. He is State Representative Jim Struzzi with us here this morning. When are you back in Harrisburg? Um, the final week of the month. Okay. Yeah, so here this week, here next week, and I have my concealed, uh, concealed carry seminar next, I believe it's Wednesday uh, the 20th at s and Arena. So if people are interested in these events, Todd, they can go to my website, simply repstruzzi.com, and they can register for the events. We have the town hall tonight. We have the concealed carry next week, and then we have another town hall in Penn Run in November. And then I encourage people also to sign up for my weekly email. I try to do a, a, a good job of, of providing information on what's happening in Harrisburg, the bills we're addressing, committee meetings, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and if people go to the website, they can sign up and subscribe. They'll get that Friday email with all that information in it. He is State Representative Jim Struzzi. A lot covered here. Good. Thanks for being yes. with us today. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Todd. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160.